Hi, my name is Hull Birkin, publisher of Fine Woodworking. We're here in my shop in Oxford, Connecticut. Perfect. All right. So we'll splice it in and um, quick little shop tour, and then uh, we'll segue into the history. All right. Well, I've had the shop for a couple of years now. I moved from a smaller basement shop. This is nice that it's a separate building, but it's probably the smallest two-car garage I've ever seen. It's only about 440 square feet. And uh, when I first got here, I thought, wow, look at all this room. But as you can see, I, I filled it up pretty Fill it up quickly. Yeah. A, lot of, uh, a lot of scraps and a lot of tools. But, uh, you know, it works. I, a lot of things move. Even my table over there has wheels on it. So I can move things around as I need to for assembly or glue up or, you know, I've got another garage for the cars where I can put cabinets if I've got a big project going. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. So what do we have here as far as tooling? Well, um, this is my latest, uh, latest toy. I've got a, a combo joiner planer, which is, is a great, great space saver. That's what I told my wife when I spent a bunch of money. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's nice that, you know, it quickly changes over from planer to, to, uh, to joiner. And it takes the space of one, one joiner. So uh, I'm real happy with it. It works real well. It saves me space. And uh, it's got 12-inch capacity, which is really nice. Huh? That's great. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, you know, your classic uh, cabinet saw there, Unisaw. Mm -hmm. Had it for a long time. Uh, workhorse. Uh, does what I needed to do. Uh, a mini outfit table. I had a much larger one, but I, you can see I got crammed there. So I've just sort of shortened it. And it, it works fine for most things. I can add something behind it if I need to leverage a, a, a long board. Sure. Like the uh, shop-made splitter? Shop-made splitter, <laughs> kickbacks are the most common problem we have on a table saw. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it happens when you least expect it, and that sure helps you uh, avoid that problem when the board closes up on itself. Well, and that shows you, you don't, you don't need an expensive, elaborate system. I, I try to con make yes. people understand, even those little systems where it's a little brass pin right, right. behind the blade, yes. that, that's really all you need to, to have an effective uh, safety device there. Yeah, when I was uh, editor of Fine Woodworking, you know, we... Uh, always poured over the photos after photo shoots and more and more we, we saw people you know not having splitters or guards on their saw so you can see I've got no guard on there so guilty but yeah, the, the splitter is, is so important and we, we started asking all our authors to put those on sure. for photo shoots because it's it really helps and it's a good you know it shows people that hey you know this is this is the way most people work yeah absolutely uh, got a dust collector in the corner there just a small one and a half horse but for a shop this size it, it works fine does what it needs to. I, I had more duct work originally, but I took it off. It just got in the way, yeah. and I can run a hose here and there if I need to. Uh, but most of my heavy dust making equipment is from the middle of the shop toward there, so, it, so it, it, it kind of works out pretty good. Cool. Yeah. And is this do you do some finishing and turn this fan on? Yeah, I actually spray in the shop. Um, I, what I do is I, if I if I want to spray, I open that window and I have a board that covers the glass, and this fan blows out all my fumes out the window, but I, I hang up a sheet here. I got some hooks in the ceiling. I hang up two sheets up. So I end up okay. with a little quadrant of the room, a little corner where the overspray is limited to just here. And uh, it, it works real well. I've, 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 I've sprayed you know, furniture as well as, you know, motorcycle parts. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, we were hoping you could, um, we, we heard that you were probably one of the uh, longest uh, running members of the, the fine woodworking club. And uh, we were hoping you might be able to give us a little bit of uh, background and history on uh, the company. Sure, yeah. Well, the, the legend goes that uh, Paul Roman uh, was uh, working for GE, and then he was also an uh, amateur woodworker. Mm -hmm. And he just loved the craft, but he couldn't find much good information on, on woodworking. So he decided to take a chance and start a little, small magazine with his wife, Jen. And uh, they started this little magazine, and it just, it just expanded and got bigger and bigger. Before they knew it, they had a, they had a full-fledged full publishing company. Uh, they started back in 1975. Mm -hmm. It was a quarterly, black and white, uh, but now it's uh, seven times a year, full color, uh, website, you know, four other magazines, books, videos. Wow. So, very successful company. I've been there 10 years. I started out as an editor, just traveling on the road, you know, taking photos and working with authors, okay. and worked my way up. And uh, I got to tell you, working with authors, that's still one of the best parts of the job, you know. Mm -hmm. Going and meeting people, meeting really good woodworkers. I've met some great people you know, all over the country, all over the world. Uh, it's been a really fun, fun ride. Yeah. I guess people uh, generally are excited to have you in their shop. I mean, it's a good opportunity for them. And, uh, people, people really enjoy, you know, getting published. It's it's just fun. Woodworkers are really like to share their their work with other people, True. and they're so generous. Uh, I mean, I've had people tell me, you know, what you 
you're going to pay me too? You know, I mean, <laughs> they thought it was just kind of fun to get published. You know, and then actually, if you're into scientific journals, you know, they, they don't actually pay, you know. Yeah, so just, some, some people in that, and we have a lot of engineers and stuff who, who write for us, and so they're used to other sorts of publishing models. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're, I mean, it's just so great. You know, they, they're so open with their ideas and, and, and sharing their information. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it's really fun. We, you know, they, we get in their shops and they just, you know, open their lives up to us. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Woodworkers are very generous people, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, a few folks have written in and actually asked us the question, and uh, I thought you'd be the best person to answer this given your amount of time with uh, fine woodworking. They want to know about tool quality in mm -hmm. general. And in your opinion, with all the tool reviews that I've passed through uh, the pages of, of fine woodworking, mm -hmm. um, would you say that overall tool quality these days has gone down? And you know, with a lot of the overseas production of things, has the quality gone down? Will uh, today's table saw be something I could pass on to uh, a grandchild, kind of like we've received tools from our grandparents? Um, do you think things have, have, are going downhill, or is it just um, that typical well, I, sort of, it's in our imagination, you know? I'm not maybe an old-timer enough to answer the question okay. well enough as you might hope, but, you know, I've been buying tools and looking at tools and writing about them, mm -hmm. you know, since the 80s. Uh, and I tell you, you can find, I think you can find better tools today than you could, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, tools come with more safety features than you could in the, uh, find back in the, you know, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, they come with more uh, features that allow you to work more accurately. And as far as longevity, you know, I, I think for the most part, you know, they're, they're, they're just as good, if not better, as far as that goes, too. I mean, yeah, this is sort of a disposable, you know, society. And uh, there's cer certain things like, you know, I mean, I had a router where the electronics went on it. And, you know, I, I couldn't just replace brushes. It was like the whole electronics module was gone. And that was like 100 bucks to replace. So it wasn't worth replacing it. I bought another router. Yeah. Whereas in the older routers, they didn't have that module. But... I didn't have speed control, right. so it wasn't as good a tool. I could not work with it as well. I couldn't slow it down for large bits, you know. So it wasn't as good a tool in some ways, yeah. but yeah, it's still running. Now the, the big machinery. There's people who love the old, big, heavy cast iron stuff from. Right. The heavier must be better. Heavier must be better. And you know, if you're really handy and 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 with tools, and you know, you can buy those and fix them up. But you know, for me and a lot of woodworkers, we'd rather be w working with wood than machines. But you know they're they're solid. But you know I, I bet this, some of these machines I have here, I'll I'll be able to pass those on to, you know, the next generation too. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Now I guess the uh, the last thing I want to I want to know, and I think a lot of people just wonder this. What what would you give as far as just a quick bit of advice for somebody who wants to get an article in the magazine? And you know a lot of these guys, the first thing you think, well, there's no way I could get an article published because it, it must be really difficult. Do you have any advice for people and encouragement for them? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people think it's difficult to get, to get in the magazine. It's true, it is difficult to get into any magazine. Yeah. Uh, partly it's just timing, making the right pitch at the right time. Uh, you know, but uh, I, think I tell people just keep trying and send us your ideas. You know, we want original ideas as, as, you know, as well as time-tested things that you've done and tweaked. I mean, a lot of ideas in woodworking are not brand new. You know, they're ideas upon ideas that somebody's developed something. And so it's that little twist to an idea that you come up with that can be the tip or the, uh, the, the full-length article that, that we're looking for. Right. So just, you know, don't give up. Keep trying. And, uh, you know, send us your pictures and cool. let us know. So there is hope. There, there is, is hope. hope. And I think the last thing I want to show everybody is, um, I guess, all of us have a, a little cross to bear. And you might want to take a look at the... <laughs> The shared space in here. Not that that's much of a cross to bear. I think. Well, most, yeah. Sometimes most, most people would love to see that. Vehicles need to sh share space with uh, with hand planes, but you know, it's it's one of my other passions is riding. I've been riding since I was a kid, so. Awesome. Yeah, it's 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 fun. Well, Qu cool. Clear clears the head. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thanks for giving us a little shot. Well, thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot.